Hi there, um, we've actually had a couple of messages through from people just explaining a bit more detail about the actual visa process where we're going down. It is something I've alluded to in a couple of previous episodes, but it's something I wanted to take two or three minutes just to run through, um, just so people have a bit of an idea of the severity of the process and kind of what kind of documentation is needed. So first of all, I think it's important to say that we are using um, Chris Ingram, attorney which is based out of Los Angeles and the service we've had so far from them has been impeccable so if you are looking to a similar process I would highly recommend Chris and his team we're actually dealing with a lady called Laura and uh, a gentleman called Jeremy and they've both been first rate so far the visa we're going for is E2 entrepreneurial two-year visa which can be granted for more than that but we're assuming that it will be a two-year visa initially we're on their own business over there, a staff training and development business with a focus on face-to-face -face delivery, but also digital e-learning as well. So because of that, the, the E2 visa just works for us because it means it grants us a um, minimum of two years in the States, but also allows me to, 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 to run my own business and for Christina, my wife, to work, which is very important for us in, in settling there. So I've just logged into the portal now, which Chris has given us access to. And what we do is we upload particular documentation to which Laura and Jeremy, who were referred to previously, review and approve. And if there's any changes or amendments, then they will get back in touch with us. Um, alternatively, it comes upon the system as has been approved uh, by legal counsel. So it's a very clear, very efficient system. We're not fully through this process yet, so still some things outstanding. But if I just read through the lines which are required, some of which will make sense to you, some won't, some of which make sense to us and some don't. We're just kind of feeling our way through it. So the first one is a Form NIV 30A. That is something that's still outstanding. It's something we haven't done yet. I'm assuming that's something towards the end of the process. Um, it does say in brackets $205 times two. So presumably that's something for me, Christine, and my wife to complete and fill in a form maybe towards the end, which has a fee attached. Next thing is a G28 form. There were three of those which we had to physically sign and in the previous episode I think I mentioned that we mailed those together with one or two other things I'll come to in a minute. So there's three G28 forms. The third thing is a DS160 which is the online form I've talked about in a previous episode where I had some issues logging in, some internet issues, some reliability issues. They have been completed, they just need digitally signing but we've been told not to do that until Laura gives us the okay. Next we've got a form DS156E, which is another form we had to physically sign and post. So we actually tracked on Rail Mail before. Um, they are in Los Angeles. Hopefully they'll be there on Tuesday after Independence Day. So Laura can have um, the DS1580, uh, sorry, 156E and the G28. And the next thing on the list, which is the passport photos, which were, were posted as well. So next is copy of the passport. So we had to scan in mine, Christina's and Scarlett's passports and upload those to the system so they've been approved. Birth certificates for the three of us. What was important with this is Christina had her parents on the birth certificate. Scarlett had me and my wife on her birth certificate. For some reason, mine was like a condensed version. Therefore, it wasn't approved. So I had to reapply for a birth certificate, which only took couple of days to come and cost £23. That was then re-uploaded and then that was approved. So there's lots of green on this portal, which is really, really, really reassuring. Uh, marriage certificate, we had to scan and upload. If you don't have a scanner at home, if you've never used an app called Tiny Scan, by the way, it's brilliant. Um, just quick download, free to use, scans in, uploads in, in a couple of seconds, really, really good. Because I'm opening a business, they'll be reviewing my background to see if I am, um, I guess, kind of experienced in that, in that sector, which I am. But as a result, I have to up, up, upload my CV or resume as they refer to it. <coughs> so that's, in the system, that's on the system and that's appearing as green, which again is good. We have to sign, each of us, myself, myself and my wife, a letter of intent to leave the US. So when the visa comes to an end... If it wasn't to be approved, then we have to sign a letter and upload that to basically say that within <laughs> within two weeks that we get back on the plane and come back to the UK. We're hoping that isn't the case, but it, again, it's part of the process. It's something we have to do. The next line is utility bills in the UK. 
they would be doing background checks on us. So we had to upload six different types of bill, um, which which basically corresponds with, with the address that we live at. Next thing is LLC documentation. So like a limited company in the UK, again, I've mentioned this in more detail in a previous episode, but something we had to do was to set up a LLC, which has been done. And again, there's lots of green on the system for those documents, which is reassuring. Uh, next couple we haven't yet done. So the next line on the system is a written statement detail in source of investment funds. So because we're setting up a business and we have to invest a particular amount of money, we have to prove where that money's come from. So we can't just say we've we've come across $100,000. We have to document sale of properties and, um, and savings. Basically, as long as we can show on a statement where it's come from, then they'll accept it. Without that, then they won't. The next one we haven't got is escrow documentation. So if we were buying a business in the, in, in the US, an active business, then what we would do is we would agree a fee with a seller. We would put our funds in what they call escrow, where it's held. Then when the visas approved, the escrow funds get, get sent to the to the seller. Um, but because we're setting up our own business, that, that isn't, isn't relevant. There's then a document which is a license or a permit, which again isn't required for us because license and permits of the business is like if if you're in if you're a dentist or if you're a doctor or if you're a plastic surgeon or if you're in real estate, there's certain licenses that you need. But for training and development, that, that just isn't necessary. So that's something else we can leave off. Lease agreement is next. We've signed provision of the lease when I'm in the States next week. I'll be physically signing and, and seeing seeing the office space. So that's something they need to show your commitment that you've actually got a lease agreement that's been signed for, for a good period of time, which we've signed for 12 months provisionally. But the final two things, they've asked for buyer photos inside and out, brochures, ads and website. So this afternoon I've been putting together just a very simple Word document with lots of visuals. So pictures of the office space, pictures of um, the, the training materials and the advertisements that have been put together which will go out to clients to sell their services. So you know, a very, it's felt a bit like a school project, kind of putting lots of images in there. So there's very little text. There's about 14 pages of pictures. So hopefully that is something there uh, that, that they will approve. And then the final thing, again, I've talked at length about the business plan. That's something which hopefully will be verified next week by the accountants. And that's the very last line on there. So at the 20 documents, I think it is, that we need to submit, I think three quarters have actually been submitted and been approved. And then the remaining quarters, about half of those we haven't really moved on yet. And the other half have been uploaded. We're just waiting for that green symbol. So hopefully it's been useful. Just gives you a whistle-stop tour of the E2 process. If you have any further questions about it, please do get in touch. Cheers, bye.